Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a letterhead for your business using OpenOffice 4 Writer. So, let's open up OpenOffice 4 Writer. And this is what we're presented with. Uh, it's just a blank document to start with. So, the first thing I'll do is go to File, Save As. I'm going to save my document. I'm going to call this document letterhead master template dash zero one. I'm going to call it, you should call your document the same name, letterhead dash master dash template zero one, and click save. And I'm just going to save it into a folder that's already on my desktop. So you see on my desktop, I've got this folder, and now I've got this one document saved in there. So the next thing we'll do um, now when OpenOffice 4 Writer loads up. Sometimes you don't see this little sidebar. There's a, there's a little option here to click and hide it. If you click one more time, it will show, and then you can drag it out, and you can see some properties. We're going to need this in a moment, yeah? This section down the side here. Now, when you open up OpenOffice 4 Writer, the first page that's displayed is called the default page. It's known as the default page. You can see that right down here at the bottom, where my mouse cursor is now, you can see it's written default. And normally when you get a letter in the post from, you know, like a business, and if that letter contains more than one page, normally the first page will have the logo and maybe the company's address and uh, a date on there. But the subsequent pages um, normally don't have the logo or the address or the date. They'll just have more content about this particular document. We call them continuation pages. So I want to show you how to set up a letterhead inside OpenOffice 4 Writer, but also create a custom second page, which will be called the continuation page. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, and you don't have to do this, but I don't like these really wide margins here. They're like two centimeters wide, and I want to narrow it down to one centimeter. So I can do that by going to Format, Page, and inside page, normally you see organizer first. We're going to click on the page tab here and we're going to set the margins from two to one, one centimeter. You don't have to do this. If you want to leave them as two, you're, you're free to do that. But I'm going to set mine all at one, one centimeter margins and I'll click OK. And you see the margins have been narrowed down on the side. Once we've done that, we should click the save button here. OK. Now, the next thing we want to do is insert our second page. So we're going to go to insert manual break. And then in the styles, we're going to select default here, default. And we're going to make sure page break is selected here in default style. And we're going to click OK. And then we're going to see a second page down here. So now we've got two pages. We've got one up top and one below it. Now the first page, we want to create a custom page for this, you could say, because we want to have our logo there and we want to have our address as well. Now, to do that, what we're going to do is right click where it says default down here at the bottom where my mouse cursor is. I'm going to right click here and then I'm going to select first page. OK, now with this one here, we want to go back to format page. And now we're editing the first page style. So we want to set these ones to one as well. If you did it in the previous one, the default style, we have to do it in this first page as well. If you didn't do it in that previous page, you don't have to do it here. If we click OK and save this, if I hold down the control key and zoom out a little bit, you'll see that we've got one page here and we've got one page here and they both have the same margins. But if I click on this first page, the first one, you'll see down the bottom here it's written first page. And if I click on this second page, you'll see that it's called the default page. So they've got they've both got independent styles now. In terms of their formatting, we can manipulate these separately. And then any other page, we create a page three, it'll always inherit the default page style. So we're gonna I'll demonstrate that in a moment. You can zoom in and out by holding down the control key and using your mouse wheel. So I'm gonna zoom right back in again so it's easy for you to see. And the first thing we want to do on this first page is create a header. So we're going to go to insert 
header and we're going to select the first page only, first page here. And you'll see this little box will appear with the header where we can put our logo and our address. But I'm going to go back to format and I'm going to go to, sorry, I'm going to go to insert, footer and I'm going to say all here, all. And that will insert a footer here, but it will also insert a footer here. But there'll be no header on this second page. I mean, it'll kind of make sense as we go along why we've done this. Okay, let's save this work. And I'm going to click in the header here. This is like almost a little separate section to edit. So I'll click once in here, you'll see the mouse cursor is flashing in here. And I'm going to go to the table tool here. And I'm going to do two times one. So I want two columns and one row. Two little blue boxes like this. And I'll click and you'll see there's two boxes appear here. On the right hand side, the first thing I want to do is type in an address, right? The company's address. So I'm going to write a line. You can type your company name in first if you want, but we're going to put a logo in there so they're going to know what the company is. So on this right hand side, we're just going to make up an address. So we do something like 45. So each time I type in a new uh, piece of content, I'm hitting the enter key to give it a new line. Let's click the save button or press control S. We'll save this work. You know your work has been saved because the save button will gray out after you saved it. And on this side, we want to put a logo. So let me go and find a sample logo. We'll just find an example one. I'm just going to go to my portfolio. Click on logo design and we'll find one. Really, I'm looking for one on a white background will be the best to use. So we'll use, um, let's use this Zargo one, for example, right? So I'll click on the Zargo logo. Here it is. And I'm just going to drag and drop that into this folder here. We can minimize this. And inside this folder, we now have this logo. Now, there's a problem with this logo. I'm going to show you what the problem is and then I'm going to show you how to fix it. So let's go back to our document and we've got the logo here and we're going to drag and drop it into here. And you'll see that it's just not going to work. There's too much white, what we call white space. There's too much white space above and below the logo. It's never going to work like that. So I'm going to click on this logo and delete it. And then I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to open up a bit of software called GIMP. Now, if you don't have GIMP installed, I'll put a link in the YouTube description on how to install this software. It's free software to edit images. And what I'll do is drag and drop the logo into GIMP. And we want to get rid of a lot of this white space above and below. To do that, I'm going to use the crop tool. So I'm going to click on this crop tool. And then I'm just going to drag around the logo. And then these little handles will appear on the corner. So you can drag a little bit out here. We want to drag down here. Anything that's grayed out is going to get deleted and anything that is white is going to be kept. And we want to really minimize as much white space. We need a little bit, just a tiny bit of white space around the edges. So you can see now there's going to be very little white space. To confirm that crop, all I'm going to do is hit the enter key on my keyboard. Now you can see all of that white space around it has been removed. I'm going to go to file. And we do export as and we will select JPEG in here JPEG and we'll call this uh, let's just call it example dash logo dash zero one you can name yours whatever you like I'm going to click export and then I'm going to set it to 100% compression leave it 100% best quality possible and click export and we can close that in GIMP we, don't, we can discard the changes because now we've got this cropped version of the logo. If you, if you don't have a copy of your logo, you've got a problem, you can ask your designer to do that job for you. Just show them this video and ask them to crop the logo for you. And they'll be able to do that for you. Or you can follow the, that tutorial there. Now when we drag and drop the logo, we can see that we can position it exactly where we want. 
and we can stretch it out and it's going to fill this space nicely it's going to look nice and clear now right now the next thing we want to do is move our mouse cursor to the left hand side of this header section and we'll click once and that's going to highlight this table like this and then we're going to go to this option here borders we're going to click on the little drop down menu and then we're going to say no borders this first option here then we're going to go back to that same option on the drop down menu and we're going to select the bottom border only this one here and there's a reason why we did that if we click outside if we click back into the main content here and click the save button and go to file and then we go to page preview here we'll see that it's going to draw just a line underneath rather than a box around the whole content so there is a table in there but the table is almost invisible apart from the bottom line here because we want to separate the header from the main content below it we'll click close and the next thing we want to do you don't really have to do this but i would advise you to do this is we're going to set out some styles so i don't really you know as default this is times roman you can see this text in here is times roman and i don't really really don't like that font so we're going to set a default style for all of the content and the way we'll do that is we'll click on this little option here styles and formatting on the side here and we will we'll click on this one characters and styles and then we'll click back on paragraph and styles here this first button and inside here we need to find the word default and here we can see default we're going to right click on it and we're going to modify and we'll go to fonts tab here then we can select a different font in this case I'll select uh, Vedana and we'll leave it regular and we'll leave it at 12 point and we'll click OK now that's going to stay it's going to change this font here and every time we type in the document whatever we type it'll always be that font size and that font style so that's called like the default font style so we click save and then we're going to move our mouse cursor to the content inside the document we're going to hit the enter key two times and then we're going to move our cursor back up to this first line we're going to write a line so we'll click write a line here and we're going to type in date and we'll put 13th 12th 2018 you can type the date in your relevant format that's the date format we use here in the uk just type in whatever style you like and then here we'll just write dear sir madam and then we're going to just write here sample content for this page we'll hit the full stop and we we'll hit the end we we'll hit the space bar once so we've got one space there. We'll select this, press Control C to copy it, and we're just going to paste it a few times, something like this. Then we'll select all of that content, and we'll hit the Enter key here twice and paste it down one more time. We just need to fill it with some content, some temporary content, you could say, placeholder content. And then underneath that, we'll simply do a signature. So we might do something like regards, and I'm just going to put in here Team DCP Web Designers. You can put your name there, your company name, whatever you want. It's up to you. And we'll save it. Now we need to deal with this footer section. So we'll click in the footer section down here. And we're going to go back to the table. But this time we're only going to do one times one. We're going to do just put one row, one column. So here we see the table inside with one row, one column. And we're going to center the content. So we'll click center and we'll, you know, we can put other things in here. We could put the phone number up here. Maybe we should put the phone number up here. So let's hit enter and we'll do telephone. So I'm going to make this phone number up. And we'll save it. And then you can make this logo a bit bigger to fill the, fill the space a bit more if you want. You don't have to. You can have the logo small, you can have it big entirely your choice i'm gonna have it sort of this size and maybe yeah, i'll leave it right where it is that's fine and then we'll click back down in this footer section and i'm going to do www dot dcpweb.co.uk my, my domain name 
I'll hit the enter key and then you can see it makes a, a low an uppercase W here at the beginning so I'm going to put in one more W here and I'm going to click back here and then hit the backspace key to get rid of that capital W I'm going to click down here I'm going to type in company company number I'm going to make a company number up and then I'll put a dash in here and do VAT number these are these two things here are optional even the the website address is optional, but we need to put something in the footer, right? Uh, we do VAT number. I just make this up. Okay, so we've got a company number, a VAT number. We can select all of this text here on the footer, and we'll go to maybe 10 point. We want to make it a bit smaller. It's a bit too big. And we might hit the enter key to put a space between the website address and the company number, like this. We might, as if we want, we can make maybe the website address a bit bigger I think that will be fine something like this and we'll hit the save button and then we're going to move our mouse closer to the left hand side of this footer section we'll click once and that will highlight this table and then we're going to go to our border styles and we're going to select none and then we're going to select the top border here this one on the left hand side the middle row left side and we'll click save then we'll go back and click on this footer section again we'll press ctrl c to copy or edit copy here and we'll scroll down to this bottom section here we'll click on this footer and press ctrl v or edit paste when we paste it we want to click right above here and then hit the delete key once and that's going to get rid of that blank space above now we can save it and we're pretty much done with our document what we'll do as an example is copy this content here these two paragraphs and we're going to paste it here on this second page and then we're going to go to insert manual break and click ok in fact we might we need to select default here default and click ok and then paste it one more time and what you'll notice if i zoom out a bit so i'll hold down the control key to zoom out we can get rid of this thing here to give us a bit more space so the things to note in these in these documents number one this first page is called literally the first page style and it has a header it has the address it has the date here and it's got the introduction text and it's got a footer on this second page it's called the default page and it doesn't have the header because we can consider this to be the continuation page and same applies with the third page so every time we create a new page, we want to set it as the default style and it will inherit the footer, but it won't inherit the header, if that makes sense, because we might have many pages continuing. Really, we don't need this, this uh, third page. So we can select everything here, hit the backspace key to delete it and hit the backspace key one more time and that will get rid of that page. Now we just got our two pages. We'll save it. And then we're going to close it. Now inside here, we're going to create a folder called archive. And we'll copy, we'll select all of these three documents, select them with your mouse. Uh, and we'll right click and drag them into here and say copy here. So inside this archive, we've got a copy of each of those, the logo and the master document. We can click on this logo let's set it back to list style we can click on this logo and delete it we can click on this logo and delete it and we're left with this master document now and we've got a copy of that here as well so we've got, we've got two copies of it you could say a backup almost now this document here if you want to now write a letter to your customer you would never actually email this document to them and you'll never actually edit this document either what you're going to do is right click on it drag it down and make a copy here so you've got now a copy of this master document you can then just right click and rename and we're going to call this whichever company we're going to be sending it to so let's say there's a company called um it's called let's say it's called zozo limited and then we put a space hyphen 
or a little dash space and then what type of project or what type of documentation is this this is a website specification and then I put the date there so the 13th or the 12th 2018 so when I look back at this document I know which company it's for I know that it's a website specification and I know when I sent that document so that these, this naming convention will tell me quite a lot about this document without even having to open it, right? I know who I sent it to, what the document was about, and when I sent it. Quite important. So when I open up this document, I can do anything I want to this document now. So if I zoom in onto this first page, I can write here, Hi, James. I may know the person's name. And then underneath, I might write something like, uh, Please find below the website specification as agreed and then this might be some website specification probably be a bit longer than that so might be some sort of text like this and then on this next page it might say something like um, social media requirements and I might select this and make it bold and then I might select this line and make it bold as well so I've got a website specification here here I've got something about social media and then I could copy all of this paste it down here and let's select it copy and paste it so it's pasted to a new page if I want it to be here, really I need to click here and hit the delete key and then hit enter. This is creating a new page, so let's select this and delete it. All I want to do is copy this information and paste it straight below. So I can change this title to something like hosting and email requirements. So we've got two pages in this document now. Really, this regards Team DCP Web Designers. I'm going to cut it from here. So I'll select it, press Control X to cut, move down to here, and paste it here, and then save it. So normally, this part of the text, I'll move to whatever is the very last page. So you can now, now you've got the, the knowledge and the skills, you can change this footer anyway. You can make this bold if you want to make it bold. You can change the fonts. You can do anything you want. You've got your logo here. You're good to go. We'll save this document and this particular document I wouldn't actually email it as a open office file I'll click on export PDF here and it will export into the same folder where I opened it from I'll click Save and I'll close this and very rarely do I print documents now I hardly ever print a document I'll just email it straight to the customer so I'll just send this as an attachment it's got the two pages if the customer wants to print it they can print it they don't have to you can click here and it will take you straight to my website it can go to your website for example so that's all working pretty well and there you go this is the document all you need to do now is attach it in an email and send it to the customer you've got your logo you've got your website address you've got your contact number you've got the date here that you created a document got the customer's name or you can just say dear sir madam you've got the specification here or whatever content you want to write you can write whatever you want and then you've got the footer section here and then you've got the continuation page and you've got a footer section here as well but on that second page we don't have the logo and the address repeated this is what we wanted to achieve so i hope that all makes sense it's pretty straightforward stuff but it, once you know how to do it it's easy i guess and um i hope you find that really useful now you don't have to go and get physical letterheads printed. What I do is just email those documents straight to my customer as a PDF file. The advantage of having this PDF file is the customer can't go and change content in here. You can't change the text. In theory, you can do it with certain tools. So you can you can get some tools like Acrobat, uh, Adobe Acrobat um, Editor or some other sp specific tools that will allow you to actually edit this document directly inside here. But in this case, most customers won't be able to do that. And you've got an original copy and you've sent one to your customer, right? But if you send your customer 
this open office document they can type in anything they want and this is your master template this belongs to you it doesn't belong to the customer so you don't really want to do that you never want to send your customer this document only the PDF file okay that's the end of this tutorial I hope you find that useful now you can create your own letterheads using open office for writer I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.